Hello, welcome to my new video about shop and mazurkas, part 5. Today we are going to talk about a mazurka in B flat major, opus 7 number 1. This is the first mazurka in opus 7, and uh, we actually don't really know exactly when it was written, because both opus 6 and opus 7 are mazurkas that Chopin published in Paris, uh, but it's very possible that it, they were most of them were written before when Chopin was sometimes 14, 15 or 16 years old when he was still in Poland. And uh, we don't really have any proofs about this mazurka. We have some proofs about uh, other mazurkas from Opus 7, which I'm going to talk about in the next series. Uh, but um, listening to this mazurka and uh, hearing this happiness which it creates immediately, uh, let us think that, make us think about Chopin still being in Poland and uh, enjoying the folk dancing. Let's listen. <laughs> And so on and so on. It's so happy. It's so such a dancing atmosphere. We are just enjoying life. We are just dancing the mazur, mazur, which is fast Polish folk dance, with the very characteristic rhythm. Pam pa pam pam pa pam pam pa pam 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 pa pam pam. That's how we have here. And the left hand. Yes. So. Uh, let's see about the beginning, how interesting this phrase is built. It starts... It goes... This is the scale going up. So the scale going up from already forte, which means loud, until forte fortissimo. Uh, it creates a huge energy. It's as if we are... We are a, we are building, building, building the energy until the climax. And it's very interesting that's the beginning of the piece and already Chopin is creating this energy with this, this explosion of happiness. This, we reach the climax. And then suddenly we have the scherzando, which means uh, joking. Scherzando and piano, so silent, and then we are going down. But we are not going down the same way we were going up, not by the scale. It should be... All the time, up and down, up and down. No, we are going down in a more scherzando way. Um, um, how Chopin is creating this scherzando? Well, he's creating this scherzando by putting some some wrong notes in this phrase. Just listen to it. This is okay, but then and then it, this is so funny. Again. Right? So this these three bars are very joking. Then we have again going up and then down. This is like a woman saying something. And again the same joking. And then again this woman and then we are going down again. Uh, so that's how the phrase is built and that's how the pianist should try to create the, the, the energy. Um, the challenge here is mostly pedaling. How to use the pedal? Chopin wrote pedal just like this.
but this pedal is sounds it, it sounds a little bit heavy to me and it's a little bit too much probably well Chopin's pianos were different than ours so uh, most likely on his piano it sounds very good and um, but the, the the challenge for the pianist is how to make it sound the way it sounded on the period piano um, how to make it lighter so definitely the pedal is something that uh, I'm going to work on a lot and definitely it should be a little bit uh, less um, for example it should sound as much dance-like as possible so the problem is that when we use the very short pedal then we miss the bass we don't have the bass so, so this is the reason why Chopin wrote the long pedal we can avoid this by um, changing the pedal on two extremely fast and then look how it sounds I change the pedal but I still have the bass together with the right hand the bass stays but this it doesn't uh, it doesn't stay all those notes together in the right hand this is ugly it is ugly it doesn't sound like Chopin hmm. we cannot play like this so I recommend uh, to change the pedal very fast on two probably to change the pedal and one two and three so one pedal 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 and then this is another example how another problem to solve if we do well Chopin wrote the pedal here but at the same time he wrote in the right hand he wrote staccato and the uh, 16th note rest so we cannot play like this because we have the pedal so it well Chopin was not stupid so he knew that if he writes the pedal it doesn't mean he wants the silence so this is more original more natural but then we can change the pedal on on two and make the mazurka rhythm so one two three one two three yes and now another challenge is to change the color of this tree uh, uh, this this three short motifs uh, this one then like the answer and then another one well we can do many things we can play the first one the, mo the, the most then a little less then a little less we can start uh, very soft then we can do more and then more or we can do the, like an echo so less more yeah, so there are many options and unfortunately it, it, it creates a problem because it creates the, the question how, what, how sounds, what, what is the best? Um, for me, as I'm working on preparing this, all these mazurkas for recording it's going to be a, a really uh, big uh, problem and big decision to make what is the best? But definitely I don't want this to play flat, so everything the same, right? Then I don't think it's worth to play like this. I think that Chopin, Chopin's music demands from us something more. Um, to, we need to enrich the colors, because the colors are changing. should be something a little bit unpredictable I think and this is the way how to make fun uh, in this one and then, um, this is such an un unpredictable phrase and it should go down but we 
we have up and then then we go down this is so fascinating then we go the same time the second time and the second dance is different so nice this dance is kujawiak so the slowest dance how do we know it well kujawiak is waving a waving dance that's the way how how we dance so here we go up and we go down every time when we go up and down in a very short motifs this is the kujawiak slow and here the second phrase this is something absolutely amazing happening left hand starts to play on two instead of on three i play for you on the left hand two three one two three one two three one two 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 this is amazing because right hand is not the right hand continues to play on three so they are not together so funny it's it, it it should be funny and of course it creates uh, a kind of the the feeling of going faster the feeling of this the bass is going uh, is is playing a little faster faster and um, well here the, i think it's very important to um, make a kind of short accent on this bass mm. So again, and now, of course, it needs to be practiced, but but it should be like this, and then we, then we are coming back to the first dance, and after this first dance finish. And suddenly we are in a completely different world. This scale is very strange. Maybe this is the kind of violinist, folk violinist playing some melody, but it's sotto voce which and the piano pianissimo which means very 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 silent almost whispering and that means this is a huge challenge for a pianist because well we need to master a very very delicate touch and also very precise because we have this short the fast These fast notes um, so it needs to be practiced and master and I think as well the softer the softer it is the better it sounds because it must be a mystery then in the left hand we have the the bass on the strings coming back to the to the first dance and it makes the mazurka in the rondo rondo style so we have a b a c and a again so it's a very very short and uh, very cute like a ju jewelry it's a very very nice shining beautiful mazurka which makes us feel very happy and that's how Chopin is doing that on purpose because the mazurka number two, which I'm going to talk uh, about in the next uh, video, is a very sad. So Chopin is preparing us in a way um, to something completely different. 
So I hope you enjoyed my video and see you in the next series. If you want to watch the previous ones, there are already four of them, you can find them uh, on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Bye bye.